kingdom believers all over the world. We are so glad you could join us, as it's always our privilege to encourage you in the Word of God. So like, share, and let everyone know we're on the air. brings forth transformation. So whenever you it's revealing to your mind who you are in God and who God is in you, then you'll have a transformation of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and you'll grab a hold to the word and say, wait a minute, there's greater in he that is in me than he that is in this world. And so therefore, I can have victory. I can't say devil, this means war. Now you need to understand one thing. Everything you need has already been provided. The enemy don't want you to see that. And I hear God saying, if you want it, Come and get it, because he provided everything you need in heaven. That's why Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Everything that you need has been provided. Oh, nudge your neighbor say, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If you want God to turn your husband around, what you waiting for? Grab a hold to the horns of the other side of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every time I lay my hands on his head, you transform his mind. Welcome believers all over the world. This is Tim and Vicky and you are tuned in to Hear and Be Healed. Listen, get your level of expectation very, very high. We got a lot of things we got to do. We got to do some praying over some finances. We got to do some praying and blessing some anointing oil. And first of all, I want to just thank everyone for your happy birthday wishes. Uh, definitely want to pray for those that sowed into uh, my life. I, I want to do what is called the twice sown seed. That's just in my spirit. The twice sown seed. Now, what I'm, I'm explaining that a little bit, uh, but let me say this first. I believe this is this. Is, I mean, I believe this with all my heart. I believe that God blesses you according to your belief, mm -hmm. your faith, and your belief. So, if you believe a thing, I believe God honors that, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so it's, a, it's it's about believing God and having faith in God for the things, and you will see. God do tremendous things. All things are possible to him that believe. So if you can believe it, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Even when I say this here, all things are possible to them that believe. So if you can believe it, it's possible. Now I'm saying it to say this here because when I see something like the twice sown seed, you say, where is that in the Bible? Well, this is something that's in my heart, and I'm going to explain it to you. Think about it this way. If a farmer had a handful of seeds, and he took those seeds and he planted mm -hmm. Then he received the harvest during the harvest time. But instead of, but instead of eating the harvest or doing whatever he do necessary with the harvest, what would, he, what, if, what would happen if he just harvested seeds from that crop and then took those seeds and sowed them again? Can you see how his harvest would multiply? Right. So that's what I'm saying, the twice on seeds. So let me explain a little bit more. So for the thing that you've sowed into my life, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and sow it into the kingdom and so, therefore, you have the twice sown seed. You sowed into my life, I'm going to sow it into the kingdom. I'm not just going to take it and say, oh, well, let me see, I'm out. I can buy me a pair of shoes. I can buy me a suit. I can buy this. I can buy that. Or else, else eat it. So instead of, you know, the Bible said give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. So instead of taking some of it and using it as bread, I'm going to take all of it and use it as seed. So it'll abound to your account more and more. So you can look at it this way. You see that you're sown. It'll be sown again. So there you have it, the, the twice sown seed. So mm -hmm. we're going to play at Pray about that at the end. Got a lot of seed to, to pray over. And so you can just bet that uh, the, you, your seed is going to be wholly anointed to bring back a harvest in your life. Now, for those that say, I don't believe in that kind of stuff, don't worry about doing it. You just, uh, you just, so you just gave me some money. But for you all that believe that as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest, and you do believe that sowing seeds brings forth a harvest, mm -hmm. naturally and spiritually, then guess what? I would, I would get my believer on and believe God and have a great expectation for what right. you've sown. I don't care if you sold $10. <laughs> believe God for that twice sown seed, mm -hmm. for the $10 to multiply twice. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so if you can believe it, you receive it. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I believe that with all my heart. That's what I believe. And if you believe with me, we come into agreement. Just think about how much more we'll get that multiplication. Also, we're going to pray over some oil uh, and for anointing for the very purpose of sanctifying and consecrating for that. 
uh, also, uh, I, don't, I don't know if my brother's watching, we talking about putting that money down. So, so, so you better know that when that seed is sown, <laughs> we're going to take it and we're going to say, be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Be fruitful and multiply. But that's because that's what God spoke to us. He says, now you go. You be fruitful and multiply. That's a commandment over mm -hmm. us. God spoke that over us. Well, he said that to Adam and Eve. No, like that thing's coming up from generation to generation. He says, my word will not return unto me void until it is established that which I have sent it out to do. And the mm -hmm. same word that was for Adam, the same word was for Eve, is the same word that's going on today. That word has not changed. He says, my, my, my word changes not. Amen. It's forever settled yes. in heaven. Amen. So, but like I said, if you can believe it, you receive it. You hear all the people say, I don't believe that mess. Guess what? <laughs> all they get is mess because they don't believe nothing. Right. But for us that believe the word of God, it will work every time. Um, I've heard people say, well, you know, you can't sow uh, money for healing. I, I, we know that each seed produces after its own kind. We mm -hmm. understand that. But I just believe that if that's where your faith is, I believe God will move on and, and give you what you ask for. Right. Today we want to talk about audacity. Mm -hmm. Audacity, just okay. having audacity. audacious faith. Uh, and the reason we, we're having this is because I was under um, studying two, two trains of thoughts and beliefs or theologies or doctrines. And so I say this had, we have to reconcile these things. Mm -hmm. And so that word came out of the studying and trying to reconcile those things. And we'll tell you about what, those, what that reconciliation is after we pray. So let's pray. I hope you've already shared with someone. Let them know, hey, Tim and Vicky is on the air and they're ready to impart something into your life that will change and transform you forever. Now, you know that we always expect what results. So don't just be listening to be listening. Have your pen and paper. And if you got a Holy Ghost notebook on the inside, because some of us do, you can preach something. So there's some people that can preach some things back to me. And you know what? While I'm here, this has been on my heart. I thank God for many of you all that have been steadfast, continuing to believe God. I have sensed your faith growing. I have sensed the change in your, your, your vocabulary, the way you used to talk, the way you're talking now, the way you used to believe, how you're believing now. I see, this, I see you're strong in your faith. I, see, I listen to you when I talk to you. I listen to you when I hear you talk to other people just to see what your conversation is like. How are you talking? And, you know, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. You don't have that old oh, woe with me. All I hear is the word of God. All I hear is faith. All I hear is trusting in God and believing in God and confidence in God and confidence in God's word. And it just, it, it just makes my heart swell up to know that God's word is transforming you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm being transformed. I'm being transformed. I just believe that if you continue to listen to us, you'll be transformed more and more and more. And that God will be coming to get you to a place to where you're walking and talking just like him. So those greater miracles that he said you could do, those greater works, uh, um, you can do them. And, you know, I was listening to somebody and they brought this to my attention. He said, you know what? When Jesus said you could do greater works, watch this here. Think about it. When Jesus was going around healing, he never used his shadow. But Peter did. He never mm -hmm. used handkerchiefs taken from him, but Paul did. Wonder what else he's going to do in this end time mm -hmm. as he began to give us the ability to do greater works. And mm -hmm. we have a Savior that ain't on no ego trip. He told us, told him, you but don't marvel yes. over this here. Greater works shall you do. I, that's what I love about him. He's not, he, he wasn't intimidated. He wasn't no Saul, mm -hmm. you know. So I'll kill us a thousand, ten, maybe ten thousand <laughs> women. They show them how to stuff somebody up. <laughs> Every time I think about that, I just think about the ego of a man and what a woman can do. But that's another, that's another teaching before I get too excited about <laughs> Y'all saw me. Yeah. Else. Ooh, yeah. They know how to mess a man up. Mm. But you ought to use it for the good, though. Use it for the good. Use it for the good. Some of y'all kind of be manipulated, but don't do that. Use it for the good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, right. so let's pray. <laughs> Way to get started. Father, in the name of Jesus in Christ and Nazareth, Lord, we thank you, thank you for the opportunity for your word to minister yes, life unto Lord. those that are thank hearing Jesus. tonight. We pray that you'll move by your spirit, Lord, yes. and bring and breathe the spirit of life into yes. those that are hearing tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, I pray right now for a level of expectation to expect, Lord, to hear the word to receive the word, to understand the word, 
then to apply the word, Lord, and bring forth fruit 30, 60, 100 fold in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, Lord, I pray right now that this word that we're teaching tonight will cause them, oh God, to receive the things that they're believing you for concerning the word in the name of Jesus Christ of yes, Nazareth. Lord. And we above all, God, give you the praise. And we ask you that you will glorify your son, Jesus Christ, by stretching forth your hand now, God, touching those that need to be touched, heal, deliver, set free, God. Yes. Provide provision for those that are needing a financial blessing, oh God. Oh God, ease, oh God, the troubled mind, God. Heal the broken heart in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, do it that you may glorify your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're talking about prayer, but we're not talking about the, the mechanics of prayer. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about prayer. I want to talk about the mentality of prayer. We're going to go through uh, Luke, the 11th chapter, and I, I didn't say this here, but I also want to add Mark, I mean Matthew, the 6th chapter. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to look at some variations. Uh, one thing I love about the, the Bible, especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is that we get to see Jesus from, a diff, from different perspectives. Okay. And it's very, very important. Uh, how many know that if you, some people saw some things, if you interviewed each and every one of them, there are some things that may agree that they all saw the same thing, but then the majority of somebody saw something different. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that what they saw was wrong, it, they just saw it from their perspective. And so when we're talking about prayer, uh, the disciples, in, as far as Luke recorded it, said that they asked him to pray because they saw him coming up, coming up from prayer. And then over here in Matthew, it was just like he was teaching, and somehow he gets intermingled into his teaching. So Matthew saw something different. Uh, Luke saw something different. And they, they all give their own interpretation of what they saw. Or, well, Luke, how it was told to them, interviewing people. And so it's good to get different perspectives and mm -hmm. bring it together. And so sometimes we hear something in Matthew say, well, they didn't say that in Luke, so it must be contradicting. No, you're just hearing it from Luke's standpoint, from what he knew or what he heard. And then from Matthew's standpoint. So it's going to bring some things together. Right. And so the thing that I was trying to reconcile was the fact that there's a teaching on faith that says if you pray more than one time, you're out of faith. So you want to pray. So if you really want to pray in faith, you only can pray one time. And then there's another teaching that says, no, the Bible says ask and keep on asking. So if you look uh, when we talk about uh, praying, and Jesus was teaching, say, asking it shall be mm -hmm. given, seeking it shall find, knocking the door shall be open. Right. And if you look at the Amplified Translation, there are some other translations that say, if you ask and keep on asking, mm -hmm. if you knock and keep on knocking, mm -hmm. as if there's an action that you must take and be persistent. And the key word there is inopportunity. And so it depends on how that word is translated. Most people translate it as persistence. And then we see how they derive persistence to begin to define that further and say, oh, persistence means you just keep on doing it, keep on doing it, keep on doing it. And so how do you reconcile that? Do I ask in faith, ask in only one time? If I ask more than one time, then I'm out of faith. Mm -hmm. And it's like saying, okay, why would you keep asking God the same old thing? He heard you. And so trying to reconcile that with the same, okay, then when you teach on this, the Lord's prayer, the Lord says, keep on asking, keep on asking. And so I just say, okay, this has to be reconciled because it can't be no this and it can't be no that. We got to bring it to one thing so we can get one final conclusion and determine what does the word of God really say. And so what I want to do is I want to walk through it. We're going to start with Luke, the 11th chapter. Now, we're not talking about the mechanics of prayer. We're talking about the mentality. So when I say the mechanics of prayer, we understand that the Lord's Prayer, which we're going to be discussing, is what we call a model prayer. You know, now, at first... Everybody was praying this prayer. Just pray exactly like you said. Pray in this manner. Uh, uh, and then, 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 then some teaching came. So that when the faith teaching came, it says, no, mm -hmm. that's just the model prayer. Pray in this manner. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going back to what I said in the beginning. Right. I believe whatever you believe, it will work. I believe that prayer will work if you right. believe it. Mm -hmm. If you prayed that prayer exactly, exactly the way he says pray it, it will work. Look at the, I mean, let me show you what I'm talking about. And he says, um, pray in this manner. Our Father. Now think about it. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so broad. It covers everything. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us a day our daily bread. Go on and say, I believe if you pray that prayer sincerely, that exact prayer, 
it'll move, it'll, it'll get you some results. Uh, you add some things to it, but it, it just opens the door. Mm -hmm. It'll get you some results because you believe in it. It's whatever you believe in. Right. Some people say, well, don't pray that prayer because that's just a model prayer. Well, if you believe that and you don't believe that this is a prayer you can pray, it won't work for you. It's whatever you believe. Now, that's just me. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, it, it it's not going to send us to hell if you believe it or not. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. It's just, do you get results? Mm -hmm. Now, I've prayed that prayer and got results. And then when I learned better, I just moved to the next level, and I just went higher and higher and deeper and deeper. Uh, so God understands what you're saying. He understands what you mean. Mm -hmm. He understands your intent. Mm -hmm. Amen? So he's looking at the heart. He's not really looking at all what's coming out of your lips, because some of the things we say that come out of our mouth, he, you know, we have to uh, cast those things down because we don't want those things to come to pass. Mm -hmm. So good that God understands what we're saying. So let's look at um, Mark 11. We're going to start with the first verse, and we're going to walk through Luke. this thing. Luke, yeah, Luke. Okay. Luke, I don't know why I said Mark. Okay. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of the, his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Stop right there. So we're not going to talk about that prayer. We, we, he's just saying pray. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's the important part that's coming up because mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's sort of like me. He's saying, okay, now I'm going to teach you the prayer, but then you need to understand the fundamentals and the mentality of prayer because anybody can say some words. Mm -hmm. This is what you need to take to heart. Right. So he begins to go on and teach the importance yes. of prayer and the effects of prayer or how can I say it, the effectiveness of prayer. So listen to how what he's teaching them about the effectiveness of prayer, how prayer works. Because we got too many people that's praying to be praying and ain't getting no results. See, that's why that's that's why Christianity is boring to the average Christian. That's why we got more people leaving than we have coming in because we're we're, we're dealing with a, 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 a religion that don't work. See, God don't want us to have religion. He wants to have relationships. So Jesus is about to teach us something. And if we grab it, to, let me ask you this here. Mm -hmm. How many of you know that your life in Christ would be exciting if every word that Jesus said concerning you came to pass, that he says, listen, if you believe all things, they are possible. Mm -hmm. When you stand praying, believe you receive, and ye shall have them. Right. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, if all those words that, that he's spoken of your life start manifesting, think about how exciting your life would be, mm -hmm. that you have people that are around you that are sick. And he says, wait a minute. Why are, we, why are we allowing the sickness to go on? He said, the Savior said, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. By God, I believe what he said. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. And we walk in it. And we begin to see those things operating in our life. So listen to what he's about to say concerning prayer. Please hear me. Get this. Don't Open your ears right now. And don't let the enemy come and steal this word because it's about to come. And the enemy comes what? Immediately. Immediately. So you don't get any understanding. Yeah. So listen to what he's about to say. V verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me, the, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in the bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his inopt inopportunity, importunity. Im importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that seeketh, receiveth. Ask it. I mean, 
Everyone that asks it, receive it. And he that seeketh, findeth. And he, to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Now, I want to, I want to, this, listen to it very carefully. Now, you notice he says, if you ask, you're going to receive. If you seek, you're going to find. If you knock, the door is going to be open. Mm -hmm. This is emphatically a, 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 a going to happen. If he said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Now, mm -hmm. now he says, he gives the example about a friend. He says, now, he's not going to give it to you just because he's your friend. He's going to give it to you because of your importunity. Mm -hmm. Now, we, if we look at the, when I look at the Strong's Concordance, there's really not a strong, a definite definition or translation of that word. Uh, but you see that they kind of slide persistence in there. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us grew up the, the, the Marian Dictionary, the Webster's Dictionary, and try to define persistence. But what I did was I went to look at the Jewish, the complete Jewish translation, mm -hmm. and they use a word called chutzpah. I mean, you, you may have heard that word chutzpah. I've been hearing that word, but I didn't know exactly what it meant. Mm -hmm. And so when we read that, most translate that as keep on, by his persistence, by his keep on knocking and beating and persisting, that you, you know, you give me, give me, give me. And, 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 and but that, that really doesn't what it means. It's not the act of doing it's the mentality and okay. the stance that you take. Okay. In other words, he know this friend here is not like the other friend. Mm -hmm. This friend is not going to go away. And so when you look up the word chutzpah, this is how it translates it. It says it's a Jewish word meaning extreme self-confidence and audacity. The audacity of this joker to come to my house at this time <laughs> of night and ask for some bread. <laughs> and not only some bread, but three Jeez. loaves of bread. Yeah. But he knows that this friend is not going to go away. I think there's another teaching that Jesus talked about, about the widow woman coming and saying, telling the king, avenge my son. He says, he's not going to avenge her because he's scared of her. He says, I'm fearing no man, no God. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. idea that he knows that she is not a person that's going to give up. Not that she had to keep coming and asking. He just knows what type of mentality she got. In other words, I don't fear you, king. You will avenge my son. Mm -hmm. And so... It's the idea of not mm -hmm. the asking and the asking and the asking. It's the stance that you take to have an audacity and an audacity to have a firmness uh, in spite of difficulty or opposition. Mm -hmm. It's a, have a, to have a firmness in spite of difficulty or opposition. Uh, it is the act, it is your stance that you take. When you, when, so Jesus said, when you come to pray, have that kind of mentality and audacity that this is going to come to pass. Because right. I know, mm -hmm. he said, if I ask, yes, I'm going to receive. If mm -hmm. I seek, I'm going to find. If I knock, the door is going to be open unto me. He doesn't want us to come like most of us do. Well, I sure hope the Lord answer my prayer. Wrong. That's the wrong mm -hmm. way. Now, the right. Bible, this is what Paul said. Seeing that we have a great high priest, that we can do what? Come what? Boldly, Boldly to the throne mm -hmm. of grace. So the idea is when you go into enter in prayer with God, you come boldly based on the fact that what he said, he said, if you ask, you're going to receive. If you seek, you're going to find. If you knock, the door will be open unto you. Mm -hmm. He said that, not I. He said that it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, I want to read something else. Now, watch this here. He says, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, would he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish... Will, will for a fish give him a serpent? He says, no. Or if he shall ask an egg, would he offer him a scorpion? Watch this. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give unto you? And he's going to, here he's talking about, now, this is what I love about it. Luke heard somebody say, give to you the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But then you go over there and you hear Matthew. Matthew says, give you all things. So it just depends on who heard what you heard. And so... That's why it's good to have many different perspectives on why did Luke hear this or, or he was interviewing, heard that, and right. my Matthew heard something different. Mm -hmm. So we need all those things to be included because who knows, maybe he taught this more than once. I mean, it was a different scenario, a different uh, 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 setting that he was teaching in. So we don't know if he taught something more than once. I'm quite sure he probably did, going from city to city, from place to place, Talk some things more than once, and mm -hmm. so different uh, um, how they gathered the word and, and interpret it, and how it was, how they interviewed and received it. They probably got different versions of it. Right. But here's what I wanted you to see. He says 
He's not going to do it because he's your friend. He's going to do it because of the mentality that you have. Uh, I know some people like that. You just might as well just go on and give it to them because the, the, the type of person he is, they're not going to take no for an answer. Uh, give you a good example of what we're talking about, um, and then we'll go ahead on and teach. Mary, Jesus' mother, is a good example of what we're talking about. Uh, matter of fact, let's, let's read. I know it's not on the thing, but I want to look at John 2 and read 3 through 8. John 2. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this now. This is, a, this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Now, okay. I'll explain it. Okay. John 2, 3 through 8. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set, and there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. Okay. Now listen to what Mary said. Mary brought her prayer, her petition to Jesus. She said, listen, they are the wine. They need wine. And she's saying, what, 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 I mean, it's not my time. Mm -hmm. Did she respond to that? Mm -mm. Not at all. <laughs> the audacity that this woman would come to her son and say, give these people some wine. And he says, hey, it's not my time. Mm -hmm. The audacity for her to turn around and tell the servant, whatever he tell you to do, do it. Mm -hmm. The audacity for her to walk off like it's going to be done. It's going to be done. Amen. So that is a t the mentality that Jesus is saying having. He says, not because yeah, of that, that, I'm his, that, uh, that I'm his mama. He ain't going to do it because I'm his mama. He's going to do it because of my importunity, my audacity, my boldness, because I'm expecting him to give me what I'm saying. And I'm not talking about you making Jesus no gene in the bottom mm -hmm. or no slot machine or you dictating mm -hmm. to him. He's telling you to have that type of confidence in your father. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, now you being evil, if you know how to treat your children, how much more so God? Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, listen, this is very important right here, very important. When you ask God for something, I know the song was wonderful. I, I, I got my praise on with it. Any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. No, we can't do that. <laughs> uh, I want you to be more specific because uh, you may get tricked and get set, and settle for a blessing that was really more less than what you, you anticipated. And this is what I mean. So anytime you make a request to God, you know I'm telling the truth. The devil always try to intervene with a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm telling you, whatever you want, you need to be specific because you don't know if you're going to get a counterfeit. Oh, Lord, I just want a good man. Okay. Now, now uh, uh, if you really want a good man, tell God exactly how you want the man. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I want him tall. I want him short. Because guess what? If you, you get a good man, some of y'all, you've been praying for, a, listen to me carefully, some of y'all been praying for a good man, and God been sending you plenty of good men, but it ain't what you like, it ain't what you been wanting, it ain't what you desire. So stop asking God for a good man and tell him exactly what you want. <laughs> tell him exactly what you want. Because I guarantee you, Good man be coming. Well, he ain't got no teeth in his head, but he a good man. That's what you ask for. You ask for a good man. Exactly. Well, he ain't got he ain't got no six figures. No, you didn't ask for no six figures. You ask for a good man. Mm -hmm. This man will love you. This man will take care of you. Uh, he might make me shame. I don't like the way I really don't like short men. Well, tell him what you want. Don't be telling him you just want a good man uh, uh, with that false humility. Tell God exactly what you want. He will give you the desires of your heart. You know, oh, I just, if I just had a car to drive back and forth to work, okay, okay, be specific because I'm telling you, whatever you ask for, if you're not specific, you will never know if you're getting a counterfeit. And I'm here to tell you, the devil comes immediately to always bring a counterfeit. Right. Always bring a counterfeit. And so you'll, you'll be safe if you write down exactly what you want because here's what he said. He said, now, this, well, well, how can you say that, Reverend? Because he says right here. If you ask for some bread, he ain't going to give you no rock. Right. He's not going to do that. So um, 
If you say, well, I just want him tall, dark, and handsome, you better put that good man back on there, a good save man on there, because <laughs> you'll get him tall, dark, and handsome, but he'll be the devil from the pit of hell. So be specific in what you're asking for, and mm -hmm. therefore you'll know when you get the package, yep, I signed for that. Mm -hmm. That's what I asked for. That's exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. Right. Stop settling. I, I was, I, I'm going I'm to I'm tease somebody. I think we can read something. Uh, somebody put on, um, on Facebook, a young lady was saying, uh, husband, where are you at? You need to help him find me because I'm getting tired of being abused. And we set ourselves up for that. Mm -hmm. You keep selling for the counterfeit. You need mm -hmm. to wait on God and whatever you ask for, stand mm -hmm. your ground. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the door, look at me who, 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 who be you? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good man. You ain't what I asked for. Just get off my lawn. <laughs> Keep going. Uh -huh. I, that, that's not what I asked for. Right. Or, or, you get, or you get to the place where you just stutter. Mm -hmm. I'm just using this, this example because it could be anything. It could be a job. You know, you've been praying God for a job and you want a job. You say, Lord, I want a job with a company car. I want a job with a 401k plan. I want a job with some, some benefits. And all of a sudden you get a job, McDonald's call you. Ain't nothing wrong with McDonald's. I want to say that quickly. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But then what Jack's for. Mm -hmm. And so McDonald's said, hey, you want to come get this job? Uh, well, it's better than anything. Be well, it's better than nothing. No, no. That ain't what you asked for. You need to stick with what you asked for. Mm -hmm. Hear me? The enemy going to always bring you a counterfeit. Trust me. I'm telling you what mm -hmm. I know. Whatever you ask God for, brace yourself. Stand on the word of God. Your, your importunity is not that you just keep on being. Oh, Lord, when you go see me, your importunity is that your persistence, your boldness, your audacious to say that you ask God. And here's the, here's the real mm -hmm. bodaciousness is mm -hmm. when you tell people what you believe in God and they look at you like, please. <laughs> you think God going to do that for you? That's mm -hmm. extra audaciousness when you say, my God supplies all my needs. And I stand mm -hmm. on his word to believe him for that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you let them waver you and cause you to start doubting and wavering, you ain't going to get it, so you're going to look like a fool in front of them. But you need to be bold and say, no, my God is Jehovah Jireh. Not only Jehovah Jireh, but El Shaddai, the breasted one, all sufficient. There is nothing too hard for God. If he can part a red sea, if he can cause the axe handle to, 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 to float, uh, if he can cause Barry to have a baby without a man, surely, mm -hmm. surely, this is nothing but bread for me. Right. Nothing but bread. And so I just believe God. And God wants us to have that type of confidence. Okay. So I want to show you something else. Look, let's go to um, Matthew, the sixth chapter. What verse? Um, let's start with verse six. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the, pray to the Father, which is in secret. And the Father will see it in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Okay, we can stop right there. Okay. So, so, so listen to what he said. He says, don't be like the heathens. Mm -hmm. One of the things he says, pray in vain repetition. Mm -hmm. uh, vain mean, you know, useless, void of power, void of sincerity, just going through the motion to say mm -hmm. you pray the prayer. Mm -hmm. He says, don't pray those, that, that prayer. He says, this, it's not going to uh, avail any much. It's not going to avail right. anything. Mm -hmm. He says, and matter of fact, he says, every idle word that we speak, we're going to give an account of. So I'm just trying to show you how we can pray Pray so we can have effective prayer because I'm telling you, this, this teaching right here, it challenges a lot of people because I'll say 80% of people's prayer don't work. I'm sorry to say that. 80% of people's prayers don't work. And it's frustrating. And I think that is one of the biggest turnoffs to Christianity. Mm -hmm. And even when you teach this here, it really frustrates people because they're already challenged and intimidated by it. But I'm saying you don't have to be intimidated. If right. you listen to what I'm saying, you will see that it will work. You see some things turn around. And that you begin to, I don't say, I won't say try God, but trust God. You get a new perspective of God, a new perspective of how you, how you approach him. Mm -hmm. Not coming to God like, like you, you like you some distant, far off alien or, or stepchild. 
you come to him as a loving father. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach the, the people. You have a father, it is a good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And that you come to him with a confidence and a boldness of knowing that I'm your child, you my father, you died, you sent your son to die for me on the cross. And if you allowed him to die for me, how much more so with his life shall you free to give me all things? Mm -hmm. And so I come to you with a mentality and an audaciousness and a boldness to know I fully expect God you to answer my prayer. Matter of fact, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to do what? Give you an expected end. And so therefore, when I, when I enter into my, my, my prayer closet, when I enter into his presence, mm -hmm. when I enter into the throne room, I already expect what I'm about to petition him for. First John says this here, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask of him, we have the petition that we desire of him. So the idea of going to him already in confidence and knowing that I serve a father who answers prayers. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as I ask according to his will, what is his will? We think Every time we think about will, we think about keeping the commandments, living right, and, act, and being obedient. That is true. But there's more so a confidence saying my father loves me and there's no good thing he'll withhold from me. There's no good thing that he wouldn't that he would like to he would love to give me the desires of my heart. God, he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of confidence that I have that 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 that's his word. And so it is his good pleasure to give me the kingdom. And so therefore, when I honor him, when I trust him, when I show forth confidence toward him, and he reciprocates that back to me. Uh, we just got too much teaching about people just dealing with their their personalities, their emotions, and uh, 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 their character. Right. And that's what that's what religion is about. We we got to teach those things because really we can't live a way that we can see God respond to us naturally. Mm -hmm. We can't see God respond to us with healings. God respond to us with meeting every need. That when a need comes up, well, it's about God's trying to teach me how to have good character, how to be content, and how to be patient. <laughs> no, you need to have that anyway. Mm -hmm. God wants to provide your need, and He's not some sadistic. Um, psycho narcissistic person that's trying to just do things just to take you through something. God is a God that's just like us. Now, anyone that's a good father, you don't teach your children with crazy things and crazy ways. You know, you don't play tricks on them to try to show them something. You teach them with love and admiration, in instructing them in meekness and love and kindness. Mm -hmm. It's when they don't obey those things and we see they're not getting them, that's when you have to chasten them. But that, you don't chasten them first. You don't bring pain to them first. You don't bring you know, evil to them first. Right. That, that only comes when they're not walking in a way that you show that, hey, 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 that's not what I taught you. Okay, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep on talking to you. And after a while, like the old people used to say, it's piling up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you know that this time come where you have to bring the chastening, chastening in. Right. But God is not a God that's doing all these things. I hear, man, I'm tired of people just putting that off on God because we won't get ourselves in a position to have a mentality to believe that he's a God that does answer prayer, that he does, he's a God that diligently, he rewards them that diligently seek him. It makes absolute, absolute if, if Joshua can say, son, stand still. And Father honors that. Mm -hmm. That man didn't say that, oh, Lord, I hope the sun stands still. Moon, you stand still. No, he said it with an audaciousness and a boldness, and he expected it to obey him. He expected it. So when we come to God, we ought to expect what we ask for. If we're asking God for healing, we ought to expect to be healed. We're asking God to meet a need. We expect him to do it and have the audacious and boldness. That is what our importunity is really in life. And I just say, I'm going to keep on asking, I'm going to keep on asking. Mm -hmm. He's sitting there and told you, he said, no, don't think that you're going to receive anything because you just keep asking. Right. So it's not just you ask and ask and ask, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. He says, have a mentality that when you ask, it's already done. Mm -hmm. When you seek, you will find. When you knock, the door will be open. Because why? I just have that type of attitude, mentality, and bodaciousness that my God is for me. Now think about, that's what, that's what Joshua was saying. 
when the ten, ten spies came back, mm. oh my God, we, we can't do it. Oh, I saw the giants. Oh, the land, like he said, flowing with milk and honey, but oh, there are giants out there that's bigger than us. We ain't nothing but grasshoppers. And, uh, and Joshua would say, oh, hold up. And this is what it's come for this. this. This is the audacity, the audacity of a man to stand up in the face of 10 speaking an evil report and say, no, if God delight in us, we are well able to go in. These are nothing but bread for us. Think about the, that, that was Joshua's importunity. He says, no, we have an audacity because we have a God that we, that is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Mm -hmm. And God loved that spirit. You, that was the spirit, the mentality that God mm -hmm. loved when he saw it in Joshua. He says, the rest of them ain't getting in, but Joshua and Caleb, they have a different spirit. I love them. They are, they are, they are audacious. They are courageous. They are bold. And so therefore, they, they, and, and they are able to speak those things. Why? Because they knew their God. Mm -hmm. All these men that were born to fight, sitting there being taunted by Goliath, saying, send me out a man. We, everybody ain't got to die. Just send me your, send me your, word, your best hero, your warrior, and we'll settle this thing, imano, imano, man to man. Mm -hmm. And let the rest of y'all, you know, go on. Here's a, here's a 16, 17-year-old boy. Coming down there, the audacity of David to say, wait a minute, I'll go fight him. <laughs> I bet Saul, Saul was choking on his wine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy, you see that thing? <laughs> that thing was born to kill. Mm -hmm. You born to worry sheep. He said, no, nah, the difference between that thing and me, my God mm -hmm. gave me the lion, my God gave me the bear, and right. those things gave me the correct the courage and the audacity to say, oh, God will give him right. into my hand as well. Mm -hmm. See, when you know your God, you shall be strong and do exploits. He'll give you audacity. He He'll give you the courage. Jesus. He'll give you the boldness. See, we can be bold in God. The righteous are bold as a lion. They are full of audaciousness. Mm -hmm. They are full of importunity. Not because they keep asking and asking and hoping and hoping. No, because they go with a mentality that is already done. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus said, when, now when you pray this prayer, honestly, it's, it's, simply he's saying, expect results. Right. Expect answers. Expect it to come to pass. He says, when you stand praying, believe you receive, and what? Ye shall mm -hmm. have them. Mm -hmm. That's the expectation. So it's not the idea that when you come to him, he's not going to say, uh, I'm going to give it to you because you're my child. Because I didn't know that didn't work. Uh-uh. He's going to give it to you because you say sanctified, <laughs> filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a burning fire, and it didn't, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, it's not, so it's not the idea that you're saved. It's not the idea that you're sanctified and Holy Ghost, filled, speaking in tongues, and 50,000 50, 50, tongues. There are a lot of people that's like that, perhaps not getting answered. It's the mentality that they know their God, and when they Jesus. come to him, they already have the petition that they ask for because they come boldly and they come with confidence. And God knows them that knows him. That's in the book. He knows them that knows him. God knows when you really trust him. God knows when you really believe him. And he can sense it in you. He can sense it in how you approach him in prayer. Mm -hmm. How you approach him in prayer. Yeah. And so the idea is when you come to God, you have to already have your, men, your, your mind set to expect. In other words, it ought to already be an expectation of what you're going to receive from him. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That doesn't intimidate him. Mm -hmm. He loves it. He yes, wants Lord. to see Thank the you. confidence that we have in him. Just like, you, like I said, mm -hmm. 12 spies went out and it was sad that God could only see two men that had confidence in him. Do you have confidence in God? Well, you know, my prayers don't go to the ceiling. Well, with that kind of mentality, they're going to stay not hitting the ceiling. You need to change that mentality. Says, Wait a minute. I'm a child of the king, and God loves me. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people right now, you, you're stuck in, you're stuck in um, condemnation. And listen mm -hmm. to what John said. John said, if you have committed sin, confess your sins. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. Because he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Right. And think about how many people are walking right now at this very moment in condemnation because they won't receive the word or have the audacity to have the confidence that God means what he says. Right. You right. walk around in condemnation, well, I'm just an old sinner. 
Well, guess what? You're going to stay that way. But you don't have to stay that way. Mm -hmm. You can receive the word that he says, and you can have an audaciousness and a boldness and says, wait a minute, I can go to come to God. Oh, you mean, Timmy, you, got an, you, you have the audacity to come before God with what you just mm -hmm. did? <laughs> yes, I do. Because mm -hmm. he says, if I confess it, mm -hmm. he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Right. And that's how God wants you to come. Because if he throw your sins in the, in the sea as far as the east is from the west, and he says he remembers them no more, I believe he means what he says. Yes, Lord. Thank you. And so a lot of you mm -hmm. scared, you, you, you're fumbling with your prayers because the enemy keep waving something over you. You remember when you mm -hmm. did this? Hey, if, if you hadn't repent, repent. Right. Cast the thing down and then receive See? the word of God and say, Lord, mm -hmm. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your cleansing. I receive mm -hmm. being put back mm -hmm. in right standing with you. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And therefore, my prayers do work. And so mm -hmm. therefore, when I pray, I have the audacity, the boldness, the importunity to ask God and begin to see results come to pass. Can mm -hmm. you believe that? Yes. So. I've said a lot. We want to pray now. Uh, so never look at that the same way. So I'm just going to keep on asking, keep on. And he already told you. Just because you're asking and asking and asking, you're not going to, mm -hmm. don't think that you're going to receive something because you just keep on asking. The idea is you got to have a mentality and a posture mm -hmm. on how you act. So how's your posture? So posture up. Go bold into the throne of grace with an audacity to believe that whatever you pray for, God's going to bring it to pass. And then patiently wait. Patiently wait for it to come to pass. Well, how long do I say and stand there for? Believing God's going to do it. See, a lot of uh, people praying for God to be dead, to be dead free, but we keep waving back and forth, we're waving back and forth, waving back and forth, waving back. No, stand on it and don't move until it happens. Don't move until it happens. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this opportunity. Matter of fact, let's just pray over that word and pray it get in your heart and that God blesses you. Now, how many are going to, how many are going to apply that? Amen. How many are going to change how you approach God in your prayer life? Mm -hmm. Not the fact that you say, if I just keep on asking, keep on asking, keep on asking, keep on asking. You know, I don't want to sound, sound sacrilegious, but Jesus was in the garden. He kept on asking, did God answer that? Mm -hmm. You got to do it. You already mm -hmm. know what you're supposed to do. Yep. And then he said, nevertheless, thy will be done. That's importunity right there. Mm -hmm. Went to the cross, did what he had to take. So, when we find out what the will of God is, that can give us the courage and the confidence to do and to act. So when you say, okay, you said you reward them that diligently seek you. Not, not, not halfway seek him. Mm -hmm. So, don't, so, don't, so don't, 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 don't read your Bible once a month. Mm -hmm. Go to church uh, three times out of a year. You know those days. And then never give to anybody or anything and expect the blessings to just... Just mm -hmm. overtake you. Now, I'm not saying that God won't bless you because he can do what he wants to because he reigns on the unjust and the just. That's what he can do. But I'm talking about being in a position that the word of God operates in your life and that you see the manifestation of the word operating in life because you're acting in obedience to the word. And then you can see God doing a whole lot of things and you can have that audacity to come bold to the throne. Not for the fact that, Lord, this is Jimmy and I want you to give me. No, no, because that's my father and he loves me. And so, uh, uh, think about Jesus. When they saw him call, when the, when the Pharisees and Sadducees heard him call God Father, mm -hmm. you make you 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 have the audacity mm -hmm. to call He O Israel the Lord thy God is one God. You have the audacity to call God Father. Mm -hmm. Man, you make yourself equal with God. He says, No, <laughs> I know Him, and He knows me. Right. That's what gives me the audacity. That's what gives me the boldness. That what, that's what gives me the opportunity when I ask for something. He, has, he answers my prayer. You remember when he stood up before the right. um, Elijah Gray? Father, I know you always hear me. The audacity that he would call Lazarus forth. And guess what? Lazarus came forth. So the idea is, when you think about opportunity, don't think about just persistence as persistence as acting, but the persistence in your stance. Your posture, your position is where you stand with God. That when you come in God to ask for prayer, your position is that you expect God to answer your prayer. Not because you're so good, not because you're so worthy, not because you're so holy, but because he's God. And he said it in his word. And he's not a man that should lie, nor the son of man that should repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he's spoken, he's going to make it good. Even for his name's sake.
Yes. There were some kings that was worthless, but God says, I'm going to do it because I, made, I said it. I said it. I said it. And so therefore, I can't go back on it. You want to mm -hmm. say something before I pray? I thought you want to say something. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and the Lord, we thank you for this yes, word. Thank you, we lay Lord. hold to the word, God, and we won't preach, uh, uh, pray vain, empty prayers, oh God, with no power, no sincerity, God. But when we come, oh God, we come with an expectation before we even fall on our knees to know, God, that the petition that we're going to lay before you, Lord, we already believe we receive in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, therefore, God, we're yes, acting, oh God, and praying out of obedience to your word, for you told us to pray, for you told us to ask, you told us to seek, you told us to knock. Now we're doing those things out of the act of obedience and with a, with a full expectation that you're going to bring those things to pass in the name of Jesus. And we're not moved by the enemy, we're not moved by opposition, we're not moved by difficulties, we're not moved by trials, oh God. If we understand these things come to try our faith, but our faith when it's tried is going to come through as pure gold, and we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor in Jesus' name, thanking you in that advance, God, yes. for the things that you're going to bring to pass in our life in the name of Jesus. Some of you are about to have yes. an adventure with God, an adventure with God. I want you to start writing things down. Get your prayer journal and start writing things down that you're asking God for. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too silly to ask. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too meaningless to petition God for. Mm -hmm. And just start doing some things and start watching God bring it right. to pass and start mm -hmm. dating it and then begin to tell people what God can do. And then mm -hmm. teach the people the same thing I'm teaching you. No, baby, it ain't about you asking God, begging and pleading and crying. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, begging and pleading don't move God. Right. Crying, bawling, and squalling, it don't move God. How many know that that is the truth? You ain't got nothing yet, bawling and squalling, and now you're <laughs> mad at God. Why? Well, do it the right way. Come to him. Because I'm telling you, I don't like my children coming there whining. I remember Sebastian coming there whining one day, telling me, I'm, 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 pouring at some, some coke. And, 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 and in fear it because I said, hey, what is that? Tell me what that is. Coke? Okay, that's coke. So you know what it is. So what do you want? I want some. That's all, son. Mm-hmm. That's all. Whining, it, 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 I believe just like it irritates me, irritates God. That whining and bawling and squalling. He said, hey, 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 hey. That ain't the word. What did I ask you? I told you to come boldly. I told you to come with an importunity. I'm not going to give it to you just because you're my child, just because you're born again, just because you feel with the Holy Ghost. Because I'm telling you, a lot of people born again for the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and then they get mad. <laughs> Watch this. Get mad when somebody just gets saved, coming out, and God just pouring blessings out on them. <laughs> Halfway living right. How, how are you going to bless them? And I know I live in, they ain't living a nickel worth a dime. And I know I'm living better than them. And God blessing them. It must be the devil. No, baby, the devil ain't never blessed nobody. Don't get it food. Don't get it twisted. The devil ain't blessing nobody. Then he's cursing them. Whatever they're getting is going in shambles. All good and perfect gifts come from above. Amen. And you don't know how they're walking with God. They are probably having the audacity. The audacity. Mm -hmm. of her to ask God for a new car. The audacity. I sit there and listen to her talking about God's going to give her a new job and I say, please. The way you living, <laughs> God ain't going to give you. And then when she get the new job, start testifying church, there you is all sort of like a toad frog talking about, ain't never done nothing for me and I know I would have been better than she living. How you know? Mm -hmm. The fact that the matter is, might not be how you're living, might be how you're giving. It could be a lot of things that's hindering mm -hmm. Or could it be possibly that you really don't trust God to move on your behalf? Mm -hmm. You just are hoping and praying, That's hoping right. and wishing. No, God doesn't want that type of relationship with us. God wants us to know him, mm -hmm. know him intimately, have that confidence in him, that trust in him. Say, hey, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Why would I serve a God that I got to hope that he's going to help me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope he's helping me today. What, what woman, what woman would want to be with a man and she got to hope he going to treat her right. Hope he going to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Hope he going to keep a job. Right. Hope he going to treat her. The devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. In the same way with a man. Mm -hmm. Hoping she just going to love me. Hoping she going to have some dinner ready. When I, no, ain't nobody <laughs> want to be in a relationship with you hoping. I want to know. <laughs> Before I get out the car and walk in the driveway. Mm, smell like dinner tonight. <laughs> I got to know. And God wants you to know that he's for you. Amen. He don't want you to hope and think, right. pray. He wants you to know. And they that know that God shall do exploits in his name. So I believe you receive that word. You walk in it. It'll work for you. And you know what? Mm -hmm. If it works for one person, I'm satisfied. 
I know some people was on there and they say, man, ain't what I want to hear. It's all right. When the blessings start rolling in because guess what? You're operating in and walking in it and then you see 30, 60, 100 fold results, they'll come back. Mm -hmm. Here are the seeds that have been sown that we're going to sow it again. So for everyone that you gave, um, we thank God for you. Everyone you, listen, everyone you that had a, a mind to give mm -hmm. and didn't give, didn't, didn't have to give. So boy, if I had... You know, five dollars. I would have blessed. I would have blessed the man of God. Hey, that's going to be counted into your account. Right. Father, in the name of Jesus in Christ, I'm not for every Jesus. seed that has been sown yes, into my life. Thank you. I sow it again into your kingdom. And yes. Lord, this is declare that this is a twice sown seed that it will get a double multiplication. I command this seed to go forth, be fruitful, and multiply yes. in the name of Jesus in Christ. And now that debts get canceled, debts yes. get paid, debts get relieved in the name yes. of Jesus Christ. And now that ends be met above, oh God, that they may have more to give in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. That you will cause, oh God, their borns, oh God, to overfill, yes. Lord. That you will yes. open the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they will have room yes. to receive, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And now so again, I command yes. these seeds to be fruitful yes. and multiply, yes. go forth and grow, bring forth yes. a harvest for many, oh God, yes. for many in the name of Jesus Christ. And that we pray. Yes. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Yes, so we Lord. thank God for that. We believe we receive amen. in Jesus' thank name. You, Jesus. Look at your neighbor. I'm, I'm, look, I'm expecting a twice sown I'm seed harvest. I'm expecting a twice sown seed harvest. Amen. amen. Now, how many of you just said that? Because I told you, you ain't going to get enough for just saying it. You're going to get it because you believe it. You can get it because you believe it. Amen. No more hoping and praying. Well, I'm going to have to sanctify this the right way because it looks like they got some, some protective things on there. So we just believe that it will permeate through these bottles. Father, in the name in of the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for the very purpose of anointing God, yes, Lord. sanctifying and consecrating as a thank point of contact, yes, we thank you, Lord, that your spirit permeates even through this plastic and even through this vessel to sanctify and consecrate the oil that is in these vessels, O oh God, for the very purpose and use of anointing, for the very purpose, O oh God, for consecrating in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, when this all is used, Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as a point of contact, devils flee, bodies be healed. God, success comes right now in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Breakthrough is manifested in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, O oh Lord, that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus be saturated in this oil that is, O oh God, it is poured out upon any and everything, Lord, that it produces life in Jesus' mighty name and death dissipates in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, for your glory that you may be glorified, Lord, for there's no power in the all, Lord, but at the act of the obedience, O oh God, brings forth, O oh God, your spirit on the scene to manifest, O oh God. And Lord, he said that the, the, the yoke shall be destroyed, O oh God, by, because of the anointing and the burden removed, Lord. Lord, do all whatever this all sanctifies and consecrates, Lord, that it, 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 it acknowledges the anointing, God, that, O oh God, that power will be present to heal, deliver, and set free in the mighty name of mighty Jesus. Name of so I Jesus. say, Lord, right now, sanctify yes, Lord. this oil as we consecrate Thank it for Jesus. the very purpose yes, of being used for yes. anointing in Jesus' in mighty Jesus name. name. And we, can, we again say, Lord, let the yes, sick be healed. Let those, O oh God, that are possessed with demons, O oh God, and spirits, O oh God, yes. be delivered in Jesus' mighty name, God. That even, Lord, that if, 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 if they are not, <coughs> O oh God, their finances, their pocketbook, their checkbook, God, that it produces life, O oh yes. God, and cause finances yes. to come forth in the name of Jesus Christ yes. of Nazareth. And we give you praise for it. Do it in the name of Jesus, the we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 I believe it's done. Jesus, I believe it's done. Amen. Not that the power is in the oil, <coughs> but the power is in the word concerning this as a vessel and as a point of contact for the very purpose of using the anointing. You know, listen to what it says. It says, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. And we, we get that. We, we act as if the anointing is the power. Now, the anointing is the sanctification. The anointing is the identifying. The anointing is the setting apart. This is saying, you are a king. So we anoint him to be a king. And so with everything that comes with the king follows. Uh, you are healed in Jesus' name. So I'm anointing you as a healed vessel, a healed body. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Healing is manifested because that person is anointed for that. 
So mm -hmm. it's the position that the anointing puts places you in. Mm -hmm. So uh, anointing as a <coughs> minister of God. Mm -hmm. So therefore I expect the power of God to be present to have a spirit and life, power and demonstration to the word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I just feel like blessings are just pouring out twice sown seed, producing a twice sown harvest. And so um, look at that hundredfold being multiplied twice. Amen. Amen. Double for your trouble. Amen. Somebody say double, double. I like, I double, like how double. I like how the Africans say it. Double, double. Double, double. double. In, in other words, they, they say double and they say it twice so they can get their <laughs> emphasis on it. Double, <laughs> double. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so I am expecting some um, testimonies because this, this word excites me because I'm telling you, I go to God and say, okay, well, yeah, I'm reading this here and say, keep on asking, keep on asking. But then say, if you ask too many times, you know, you're not operating in faith. So this, this, uh, this word importunity must mean something else. Mm -hmm. And man, when I heard all they said, audacity. Listen, mm -hmm. your prayer, we finna leave. Your prayer life ought to be so bold in God that when you're praying around people, people are starting saying, did you hear what she just prayed? <laughs> the audacity <laughs> to think that God is going to answer that prayer. Because if people ain't saying nothing about you, your prayer ain't worth nothing. Thank you, we got to get that prayer to where we make people think that, man, this person got a lot of boldness to come before God. And you know what? And God just be... He, he be cheating so hard, he, Jesus has to say, Lord, like this, I can't, I can't. They make me happy. When I look at them and I look at how they treat me, how they believe in me, I just can't help but smile. You know, we ought to look at it that way. When we have one of them sunny, hot days, yeah. don't be complaining about how hot it is. Think about that God smile, smile on you, and that you're doing so many things to please him that he just can't stop smiling. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. Swear, ooh, I'll be so hot in here. No, this, there's a lot of ways we can look at, look at, look, a lot of ways we can look at things. And so, I, I'm excited about this word because I know that you see this a whole lot different now. Not big and pleading, oh Lord, please, that's my prayer. But that you come with a boldness and saying, I fully expect uh, God answer my prayer. So when you tell people saying, uh, where are you going? You don't say, I'm going to pray. You tell them, I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive. Mm -hmm. That's a word for you tonight. Stop saying, I'm going to prayer. Say, I'm going to receive. Mm -hmm. Where are you going tonight? I'm going to church. I'm going to receive. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to receive. In other words, I'm going to get the end results of what I'm getting when I'm starting. So if I hear the word, the end result is uh, bring forth fruit, 36, 100 fold. Mm -hmm. When I go into my throne room to pray, I'm expecting it to already be done. Mm -hmm. I have the petitions that I asked for. Amen. So, yes. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just know Hallelujah. that the word that is spoken thank you, tonight Jesus. is going yes, to produce Lord. some effectual, thank fervent you. effectiveness Hallelujah. in our life that we believe we receive. Thank you, Lord. So, therefore, not looking at things the same way, yes. oh God, the old way, hoping and praying and wishing, Lord, thank but you. fully expecting that when we ask you, Lord, yes, Lord, that you will give us what we ask for. If we yes. ask, oh God, for a specific thing, you're not going to give us anything different. If we get anything other than that, it is a counterfeit, yes. Yes. and we won't receive any counterfeits. We want to receive what we ask for. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes. we give you praise for it. Amen. Yes. Listen, I'm going to give you the same word before we leave. Um, I, think, um, uh, I think it was Brother Curry had believed God for $300. He said, I need $300. And so he was sweating, believing God, trying to wait till it come to pass. All of a sudden, he got $50. He said, well, Lord, if I could just get $150. Well, at first he said, well, if I could just get $200, I think I'll be all right. Then he got to where he was steady waiting on God. He got all the way down to $150. And God said, let's stop because you, you, you've been out of faith. <laughs> you've been out of faith. So the idea is stand on what you prayed the first time. Don't receive anything else other than that or else it is a substitute and a counterfeit, and that's not God's best for you. Mm -hmm. God says he will give you what you ask for. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said. He says, ask that your joy may be full. So stop settling. Stop receiving counterfeits. Stand your ground. Stick to it. Mm -hmm. And just go forth and just enjoy the journey with God. Amen. Right. So we love you. We'll see you next Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the effectual fervency of his prayer with passion that evaded much. Get excited, get ready, get set, because we about to go. I'm here to tell you, 
The word is going to spread. Whatever you need, God's got it. There's some folk down there that's just not concerned about they for it no more. If you need help in your house, where the enemy is trying to come in and take over, there's some folk down there, you ain't got to find but one, baby. Just find you one. They will pray effectually and fervently for you, and God will come in and arrest that devil and put him out. I need some soldiers, I need some warriors, because this means war.